Okay, so uh, we're gonna start now. Um, welcome to my presentation about Seagator 5 in Drupal 9 and 10. Uh, happy to be here at Drupal Camp after our longer break. Um, today we'll talk about uh, Seagator 5 and about some things that you probably never heard about CK Editor. Um, so a few words about myself. Um, I work at CK Source since 2007. Uh, if you wonder what CK Source is, uh, it's a company behind CK Editor. Uh, so basically, uh, we created CK Editor and uh, we continue developing it. Um, I'm president and CPO at CK Source. Formerly, I was a CTO at CK Source and I was uh, Drupal 6 and Drupal 7 uh, module maintainer, I mean, CK Editor module maintainer. Uh, yeah, and that's about myself. Um, so today we're gonna cover a couple of the topics, uh, how it actually happened that Secure 5 ended up in Drupal. I'll give you some overview of Secure 5, uh, including some of the features that are not included in Drupal uh, by default, but that you can add by yourself. And at the end, I will go through a sample plugin that was built to showcase how you can extend uh, Secure 5 in Drupal. Uh, but before we start, um, let me show a couple of screenshots to uh, simulate your imagination. Uh, so, this is the stock Secure 5 in Drupal, if you didn't have a chance yet to uh, see it. Um, this is also uh, the stock Secure 5 in Drupal, uh, this time with uh, a couple of more buttons. Uh, this is also Secure 5, uh, not in Drupal, but Secure 5. It is easy to customize uh, with uh, CSS variables. Uh, this is also CK Editor, uh, this time with restricted editing functionality um, that uh, allows you, for example, to create only certain parts uh, editable in CK Editor. Uh, this is also CK05, uh, this time with uh, pagination functionality uh, that lets you see how the content will be split into pages. Uh, go through the pages if you look at the top left corner and I'm actually even to create PDFs uh, out of it. Uh, this is also Secure 5, uh, this time with uh, intelligent text predictions. Uh, so uh, <laughs> I have many times problems with business communication, so it helps me a lot. Um, this is also Secure 5, uh, this time with uh, track changes. Uh, so functionality that lets you uh, suggest changes in the document instead of adding them directly. Uh, this is also Secure 5, uh, this time with revision history, um, allowing you to browse through historical revisions and see uh, exact changes that were made in the document. Uh, this is also Secure 5, <laughs> as you can see, Secure 5 can have different flavors. Uh, this time uh, with real time collaboration, allowing you to see uh, who is connected to the document and collaborate uh, on the document. And this is a cake edition of Secure 5. <laughs> I'm showing those examples to um, underline that CK Editor is really flexible and um, the default Drupal integration is great already, uh, but it doesn't have to limit you in any way uh, because thanks to uh, Drupal API and powerful Drupal modules, you can extend it further uh, with third party plugins, with additional plugins, basically to ad adjust it to your needs. Uh, yeah, so I would set it. Uh, don't, don't feel limited by uh, what is included in Drupal core by default. Uh, Drupal team has a hard time to actually define what should be the core proposal, what uh, should be available as a contract module. So uh, there is some balance needed, but you can add extend CK Editor 5 further according to your needs. Um, okay, so a couple of words how it happened that actually uh, CK Editor 5 uh, landed in Drupal and why we are talking about CK Editor 5 today. Um, so as most of you know, uh, Secure 4 is the default uh, WYSIWYG editor in Drupal 8 and Drupal 9. Uh, it has been added to the Drupal core years ago, uh, actually almost 10 years ago. And unfortunately, as every software, it is slowly reaching its end of life. And because of the upcoming uh, end of support uh, for Secure 4, uh, Drupal had to choose another WYSIWYG editor to replace Secure 4 uh, in Drupal 10. And Secure 5 was selected as the successor uh, and will become the default uh, editor in Drupal 10. Um, there are multiple reasons why this has happened. So first of all, uh, Secure 5 is a really good editor, but most importantly, Drupal and Secure teams have an amazing um, record of previous collaboration. The next slides will show this a bit. Uh, so, uh, 
Integrating C05 uh, has been an enormous combined effort from both CK editor uh, and Drupal teams. Uh, let me just show you a couple of pages of tickets um, from the roadmap to add CK05 into Drupal core. Uh, it's been a long journey of a combined effort of the Drupal team and, and CK editor team. And believe me, some of those tickets were really complex. I've made those screenshots like a month ago, and actually the list is even a lar a longer today. So tickets, tickets, more tickets, even more tickets, and tickets, 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 lots of them. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> it took actually two years or even, even more to end up where we are today um, because Drupal team wanted to guarantee you really excellent experience uh, for uh, Drupal 9 and 10. Uh, so that's why we men and the rest of the team is doing a lot to um, make the best experience possible for, for, for the content authors. Yeah, so over two years of work and lots of people involved. Uh, so um, special thanks for Benjamin Mullins, Laurie Escola, Wim Mears, Peter Weber, and many, many other people who are uh, involved into that project. That this is actually growing, growing constantly. Um, so on our side, on the CK store side, uh, we, um, apart from helping guys from the Drupal team um, on a daily basis, we also introduced several uh, important uh, enhancements to CK05 to actually meet uh, Drupal requirements. Uh, one of them is um, the general HTML support. So um, basically the functionality that lets you support any HTML elements, attributes uh, that you wish. Uh, Webpack DLS, um, this was important to, you know, in, in modern JavaScript world, you basically um, make a project and bundle all the JavaScript and then you have a ready to use application in, in Drupal. It's important to be able to um, add the possibility to enhance uh, JavaScript projects such as CKDR5 with uh, additional modules. So it was important to be um, to add a functionality to uh, register additional plugins for CKDR5 on runtime and their Webpack DL also come, comes handy. Uh, we introduced uh, styles dropdown. It's not available yet uh, in Secular 5 in Drupal, but I will share a screencast of it. And we also introduced support for document lists as for um, content backwards compatibility. Um, so before I move on, um, I wanted to mention one thing. Uh, don't be fooled by the numbers next to the name of the editor. Uh, Secular 5 is not a continuation of Secular 4. It has been removed from scratch. Uh, so it's a basically completely new editor with a completely different architecture, different API. And uh, re rewriting an editor was a hard decision, uh, but without uh, doing this, so we'll not be introduced, uh, we'll not be able to introduce all the changes that we wanted to. And uh, <laughs> before we uh, make another decision of this kind to create yet another editor from scratch, uh, let me show you something. Uh, as the first commit for Sigur 5, it was 2014. Uh, so we'll think twice before we do the same thing again. Um, we are still in the middle of the road with Sigur 5 and adding functionalities. It was eight years ago when we started it. So it's a really complex thing to build a really complex software from scratch. Um, and because of that, uh, because of, um, let's say, um, the inconvenience of providing a completely different API, um, I think we'll go the same path as Drupal uh, did after this experiment with Drupal 8, where there's, where there's no backwards compatibility, let's say, and we're going to be uh, evolving rather CQ5 in the future than doing the same thing as we did uh, right now with CQ5, but we'll see. That, that's the goal, at least for now. Um, so about CQ Editor 5, uh, it's already available in Drupal 9. Uh, starting from Drupal 9.3, uh, it's available as an experimental module. It's important to understand that it's an experimental module uh, because um, if you look at the list of issues uh, for CP35 in Drupal, you will see that there are still some slight uh, compatibility issues. So um, before you enable it on production with existing content, it's better to make some tests if everything will be fine. Uh, but if you are looking, I don't know, setting up a new website, um, it should be quite a reasonable to actually start with CQ5 because if it's stable, it's just uh, the only thing that have left are those small compatibility, content compatibility issues. Um, but I will elaborate about it later on. 
So um, an Adlin CD05 is really straightforward. You just go to the modules page, find the experimental section, and enable CD05. And then you go to the text uh, formats and editors configuration, and enable CD05 on the chosen text format. Um, then you'll see a couple of weird, strange, scary messages. Um, but they are intentional. Uh, basically, uh, Drupal team is doing their best to uh, port the configuration from CPTOR 4 to CPTOR 5 uh, automatically so it, that you didn't have to do anything manually. And those are those messages. And once you save, uh, you'll see a brand new toolbar configurator with CPTOR 5 toolbar buttons. And you're ready to go with CPTOR 5 and you can use the new editor. Um, yeah. So um, about the future, um, Cicero 5 will be the default and the only WYSIWYG editor in core uh, in Drupal 10. Uh, I think the release is planned on, on December this year of Drupal 10. Um, so we still have some time uh, to adopt to Cicero 5, uh, but we encourage you to give it a try, uh, especially if you um, are looking to improve the editing experience of your users, but also uh, if you would like to no, make sure that your needs will be met. If you right now give it a try and, uh, you know, we are analyzing every single issue that is reported, same with Drupal team. So uh, the sooner we get feedback, the sooner probably it will be taken into consideration. Um, one more important thing about the data retention. Um, CQDO5, uh, we wanted to come with a different proposal with CQDO5, a much simpler UI, et cetera. Um, at the same time, it means that there are some still little things that we didn't deliver in CQ05, but there's one important thing that the Drupal team is um, working on to make sure that uh, your content will be safe. So, uh, you know, it's important if you edit legacy content so that it wasn't accidentally changed, and this is uh, the goal of the Drupal team. So it means that uh, there might be you know, situations that will not be you know, had have the same interface as it was in Secure 4 to edit some functionality, but the content will definitely not be lost. Um, yeah, so that was the first goal in terms of migration. Um, about Secure modules, as I said, uh, there's some problem with the editor. Um, so there's one thing that I wanted to say about uh, Secure modules. Uh, as I mentioned, Secure 5 is a completely new editor. Uh, which means that those modules that were registering Siki editor plugins uh, will have to be adopted to support also Siki Editor 5. Uh, but the good news is that the most popular modules are actually um, supporting Siki Editor 5 already. So it's more like a concern about uh, less frequently um, used modules or your own modules that were in some way interacting with Siki Editor 4. Um, okay. Now, let me go through uh, some of the new enhancements added to CQ5 in Drupal. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, many of those enhancements uh, were um, in the UI and uh, improved user experience, but there were also some functional uh, improvements. So, um, the mini widgets have now a dedicated balloon toolbar uh, attached, allowing users to quickly adjust embed media. So you no longer have this you know, overlay, model dialogue, et cetera. You can uh, make all the changes directly in the editor without leaving the context, without leaving the editor. Um, yeah, they have this dedicated balloon toolbar attached, uh, allowing you to know, adjust the size, uh, create a caption, uh, and things like that. Uh, links, the UI of links have been also heavily changed, so you can, you, you have now right, um, a toolbar attached, uh, and you can quickly see uh, what's the exact URL of the link and actually open it. So, um, enhancement, usability enhancement, comparing to previous editor. Uh, this is the upcoming styles dropdown uh, that has been reworked to let you present nicely how its specific style will look like. Um, it's in progress, there is a dedicated issue where um, we miss working on it. Um, another thing uh, which is called auto formatting, it's also in progress, uh, so we may expect it later on in, in Drupal. So basically, we added support for markdown formatting. So uh, if you are familiar with markdown uh, and you don't want to I don't know, use a lot of CQ buttons to apply formatting or create structures such as lists or headings, 
we can use simply markdown syntax. So in, in this example, for example, if we surround text with two asterisks, uh, it will become bold. And uh, there are many other, uh, so there's other syntax supported like uh, lists, as I said, or call blocks, block quotes, horizontal lines, etc. You can check our documentation for more details. And this is also in progress, so it's not yet available in the Secure 5 experimental module, but it will be because there is a, such an intent. Uh, there is another similar but even more powerful feature, probably, so-called transformations. Uh, it lets you uh, define <laughs> transformations, how they should um, be um, handled by Secure 5, and to uh, tell you what are transformations, I will just show you a simple example so if you uh, surround c in parentheses it can uh, be converted to a copyright sign so uh, if you have you know are using some kind of special characters i don't know like arrows or something like that you can use it to uh, make it easier to to create them uh, unfortunately uh, if you would love to use it you have to make a feature request on drupal.org because it's not yet being worked on um okay uh, one more thing uh, for those of you who I don't know, follow out more closely our roadmap and our intentions regarding CQDR5. Some of you may remember that we didn't want to introduce source mode in CQDR5, uh, but we later on gave up <laughs> and we listened to our community uh, because, uh, you know, if I don't know, one or two people object, uh, then you can, you know, consider that you're right. But if you have hundreds, thousands of people telling you that they want this functionality, you have to simply listen to them. So we introduced uh, the source mode. Uh, it's available in uh, CQDR5. And um, just remember that uh, if you enable, I don't know, uh, source mode, the full HTML format, uh, you introduce a slight risk of uh, self-XSS for your uh, end users. So make sure that you are um, aware of the consequences at the same time, if you are using source mode for creating some kind of content for which there is no UI available yet, let us know. Because uh, one thing that I wanted to make you aware of is that really our we, we are not like gods. We we are really feedback driven. So if we have you know uh, feedback from the community that something is missing, uh, we try to analyze it. Try to analyze what's the context. Uh, what's the requirement and let's simply deliver it uh, we, we don't know the use cases unless you, you tell them uh, to us so uh, really please feel encouraged to um, give us as much feedback as possible um, yeah there's maybe just one more thing about this um, you know we are, we are delivering software components so we don't have that much direct interaction with the end users of the editor uh, those who implement websites, who create websites, who have direct contact with end users, have many times much better knowledge than us about the exact needs of users. That's why we need you to be, uh, let's say, the advocates of the end users and report to us uh, their requirements. Um, okay, uh, let me go next. Um, about features that are not included in Drupal, uh, but you can add them by yourself, uh, for example, using uh, creating by creating a, a contrib module. Um, so this is a functionality that uh, we provide with Secure 5. This is the word counter. So basically, we don't uh, provide a UI for that. We expose an API to uh, simply get the number of words, characters, and so on. So if you have such a need for your content writers, you can easily uh, write a module for that. Uh, there is also a, a dimensions plugin that is not available in Drupal, but you can again add it through a country plugin if you would like to, uh, you know, mention people in your documents. Uh, <laughs> same as with Secure 4, um, functionalities to set the font family, size, color, background color are not included by default in Drupal, uh, but you can add it by creating an own module or by encouraging the current maintainers of the same module for Secure 4 to. Uh, provide a um, compatibility for Secure 5. And um, I will go also through a couple of premium features. Uh, before I go uh, through the list of premium features, let me explain why I'm uh, talking about this. Uh, so basically, Secure 5 is an open source editor. Uh, it's a GPL license editor. So basically, as long as you're compliant with the GPL license, you can use it for free. 
Um, but at the same time, uh, not sure if you're aware, but CK source consists of 70 people um, who are working on CK editor and, and, and other features. So um, we need to sustain somehow the project. So basically, um, we pay our developers for maintaining CK editor. Um, so we need to have some money from some uh, some, some places, and uh, this is where premium features come in handy. So we provide a really rich text editor under the GP license, but we also provide some additional premium features uh, that um, some companies decide to purchase to uh, even enhance further the, the user experience and the productivity of their users. Um, yeah, talking about sustainability, <laughs> just a couple of examples uh, why it is important. Uh, we are already on the market for 18 years, I believe, so um, yeah. Uh, and actually, uh, funding the open source project is a, you know, a story for another presentation. Um, but I will just give you a couple of examples why sustainability is important. Uh, at some point, uh, before actually Drupal 8 introduced the CK Editor 4, um, there was a, this, there was a intent to include Aloha Editor uh, into Drupal, and actually the, the work was pretty advanced on that. And uh, I believe that Drupal 8 was released in 2013 or something like that, mm, or even more, or even later. But uh, Aloha Editor was stopped being maintained. Uh, it, it had the last major release in 2015. Uh, and we have still websites relying on Drupal 8. So um, it shows how it's important to have stable and reliable components. And there are more examples of this kind. Uh, Quill was a very popular editor um, not so long time ago over 30,000 stars on uh, GitHub, uh, last major release in 2019. And uh, as you know, uh, software that isn't maintained uh, is a source of some problems, like uh, security issues that nobody is caring about. And <laughs> I did a look at uh, the old Drupal 7 WYSIWYG module, and it turned out that six out of eight supported editors are dead already. So again. It's nice to have some way to sustain your project. Um, okay, so enough about dead editors. Uh, here are some of the premium features that I would like to quickly showcase before we move to another part. Um, the export to PDF, I already showed it at the beginning. So basically with a proper configuration, you can have one-to-one -one experience of what you see in the editor uh, will be what you get in, in the PDF file. Um, we have also export to Word functionality, so we can export documents to the Word document. And what's nice here is that uh, you can actually export documents with suggestions, comments, uh, and things like that. Uh, there is a comments functionality. So if, if you have, I don't know, marketing teams uh, working on the content, and I don't know, using Google Docs to collaborate and then uh, paste the, the content to back to Drupal, we offer functionalities to actually uh, keep your users inside Drupal without leaving Drupal to collaborate on content, so comments, uh, track changes, um, revision history that I mentioned, and there was one more thing that I wanted to show about revision history. Um, the, the, the nice user experience, so we can go to the changes, you see the, those arrows uh, on top, and another thing that I didn't show on the screenshot is that actually you can compare several revisions at once. So if you um, stopped working on a doc document at some point and a couple of other people were working, so we can then you can quickly look at the um, combined uh, set of changes uh, that were made in the document. You are not limited just to look at uh, specific revisions. Um, yeah, real-time collaboration, something that you may know from, I don't know, Google Docs. So basically, uh, you see the list of connected users. Uh, you see uh, the exact cursor position of uh, all the users or their selection, and the comments that they added, comment threads. Um, of course, you can, I don't know, close comments, and um, basically the things that you know from all, I don't know, Google Docs, for example. And um, maybe I will stop here and uh, tell one thing. Uh, you can already look at those functionalities on our website, on secretor.com, uh, but we are working as we speak uh, on a dedicated module that will make it really simple to enable those functionalities in uh, Drupal. Uh, we are working uh, on this with together with Droptica. Uh, so I expect, I don't know, to have something ready within a month or so. Um, we would like to have some early adopters willing to test this functionality um, because it's not easy actually to provide um, a solution that will uh, be applicable for hundreds of thousands of websites working on Drupal. So we are looking for uh, early adopters first to 
um, polished to further the user experience for, for the Drupal CMS. Uh, yes, so we are working on that as we speak. Actually, we have some solid progress. We have uh, track changes integrated, uh, those export to PDF to work. We are working right now on revision history and uh, we soon start working on retail collaboration. So uh, we are in progress. Uh, no demo yet, user imagination. <laughs> Um, another thing that uh, I would like to showcase to you, just again to unlock your imagination, uh, because many times you probably don't use this stock Drupal, but you make further adjustments. Uh, for me, it's important uh, for you to understand that you're not tied to the default proposal of City Editor. You can enhance it further. So one of the nice uh, functionalities, uh, it, it was available in City before, but let me just uh, um again try to raise this topic uh, basically widgets widgets are i would say that those are components inside ct editor uh, that lets you insert more complex structures like product cards um, external libraries like charts or mathematical formulas uh, into the editor so um i will show you a couple of examples of widgets that uh, are included in ct editor so basically an image is a widget and um, by Making an image a widget, we, we get a couple of nice things. We have this dedicated toolbar that we can use for a widget. Uh, we have this uh, surrounding border uh, allowing you to quickly insert uh, enter on top of and at the bottom of the widget. Uh, so it comes with an, uh, some nice uh, usability enhancements by default if you make something a widget. Tables are also widgets. Uh, and if you can see, uh, you can also uh, drag and drop widgets um, to move them uh, in the content. Um, another example of a widget uh, is a uh, widget to insert diagrams. Mm, so I wonder if you know what you're seeing here. Does, does the interface look familiar? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's a GitHub uh, text box. So basically, um, but anyway, let me first talk about the widget. So here you have a widget that uh, lets you create diagrams inside CK Editor. So here you have the mermaid syntax. On the left side and on the right side, we have an instant preview of this chart. And this was a plugin that we made for Citator 5, again, using widgets. Um, yeah, so as I mentioned, uh, this is <laughs> a CK editor in GitHub. Uh, it's a GitHub writer, um, an extension that we uh, created for browsers, um, for Chrome and Firefox, actually. And I will explain why I'm showing this to you. Um, so, yeah, basically the extension turns the default uh, text editor uh, on GitHub to uh, this, uh, you know, editing area with CK Editor. Uh, it helps me a lot because I'm sag at creating tables in Magno. I also many times forget how to, you know, uh, insert links, etc. So, um, anyway, why I'm showing this uh, GitHub writer here? Again, to unlock your imagination. This, this presentation is not uh, intended to, I don't know, teach you how to create plugins, etc., because it's more complex, uh, but just to unlock your imagination. Um, so how it was actually possible that we have CK Editor that is able to read Markdown and, uh, you know, work on, on GitHub that is using Markdown instead of HTML. So basically the, the architecture of CK Editor 5 uh, makes it easily possible. Uh, because we have, the, the Skiro 5 uh, is made of blocks, and one of those blocks are so-called data processors, and the default data processor that CK5 is using is the HTML data processor. So basically, we get some input in HTML, then the processor is processing it, uh, so that CK5 could understand what uh, was the final model of the document, and then uh, when you ask CK Editor to return the data from CK Editor, it, it's again translating its model to, to HTML. And this, those data processors can be easily uh, swapped into something else. Uh, so in case of GitHub Writer, we swapped it into a, a Markdown data processor. But if you have I don't know, other needs, like uh, to have a JSON data processor, it's also possible. Of course, it's not that straightforward, but it's possible. And just, uh, you know, I, <laughs> I'm not super uh, deep into Drupal, but um, it seems to me that in theory, it should be possible, for example, to provide some alternative to the well-known paragraphs module uh, because basically you can um, introduce some kind of structured editing on top of CK Editor 5, but that's uh, that will be a challenging topic, but should be possible. Uh, okay, so 
I'm going fast through all of this. Um, again, I will not gonna uh, learn in 10 minutes how to create a plugin that extends Citator 5, um, but I will show you briefly how to do this. Uh, there is a repository on GitHub with the full source code, so we can later look at it to um, you know, analyze every single line. Uh, right now, I'll just show you some concepts so that we could understand on a high level basis how Citator 5 works. Uh, before we move on, um, I must tell once again about those Webpack DLLs. Uh, basically, there is some magic that you have to copy in order to be able to add plugins to, to Drupal. Uh, yeah, so because Secure 5 uses modern ES6 JavaScript, uh, it's usually being bundled uh, with all the features uh, that you need in the ahead of time build process. And unfortunately, that's not the case uh, for Drupal, where we need to add uh, bits of Secretor 5 uh, features dynamically. And uh, here the Webpack DLLs uh, comes in handy. So um, Webpack DLLs are pretty complicated in sites, uh, so I will not go into details. Um, basically, you have to add some <laughs> magic DLL handy code I will show later on, uh, on the screenshot and then all the imports will uh, work, um, all the dynamic imports will work. Um, yeah. So, uh, yeah, so if you look at the example code of the plugin uh, and you look at the Webpack config configuration, you'll see that there is this uh, magic code that will make the plugin work with Drupal. Uh, so if you ever take the source code of Citator 5 plugins and try to uh, simply integrate with Drupal, remember that it will not work until we, you use this uh, Webpack DLL uh, tweak to make it working. Um, okay, so that was the boring complex part, now let's move on to the more interesting uh, complex part. <laughs> uh, so we're gonna create a simple plugin for Citator 5 um, that will let you insert uh, a widget uh, which consists of two columns. Maybe that's not the most useful example we could imagine, but it showcases nicely a couple of concepts uh, in Secretor 5. Um, yeah, so basically we created a plugin uh, that defines the toolbar button on the top right uh, and that allows users to insert this two columns um, layout structure uh, into the editor. Uh, this is the link to the working uh, source code of this plugin. Uh, it was <laughs> actually shows the beauty of the open source community because uh, it is based on the previous attempts uh, by Peter Weber and Laurie Escola, so it's like a third variation of the same plugin uh, that we are fine tuning um, over time. Uh, so, um, again, I know you're not going to remember this, so don't try to remember the very specific uh, names of files, etc. Just try to focus on the, on the general concept of what I'll be showing here, because you have the source code. Uh, you can go back to I don't know, the recording of the presentation. Just focus more on the high-level, um, let's say, overview of this. Um, so. To introduce the plugin for Secure 5, we're go not going to use a, even a single PHP code. Uh, all that we need is the JavaScript code uh, that actually is responsible for the Secure 5 plugin uh, and some YAM files to uh, make Drupal aware of this plugin. And that's it, actually, and the Webpack uh, configuration file. Not everybody understands, well, apart from people that are able to create it. Um, yeah, so the Webpack file is responsible for this DLL handling and for actually uh, building the plugin. Um, nothing interesting there. Uh, the package.json has just one script to uh, build the plugin out of the source uh, JavaScript file. Um, again, something that you can copy from, from the um, sample plugin. Um, now the YAM file uh, that defines um, the module, nothing fancy here actually, defines just the compatibility and the requirements, the dependencies. Um, the CK editor file, YAM file, defines a couple of uh, interesting things. Uh, so for example, at the very bottom in the elements section, we instruct Drupal what kind of HTML elements this uh, plugin will introduce. And we also notified Drupal that there will be a toolbar item 
so that the toolbar configurator knew that such uh, an item exists. Um, the libraries file uh, simply uh, tells Drupal which assets to load uh, with this extension on, on admin and front end part. And that was actually the Drupal side of things. You know this part already, so um, now let's move on to the CK05 part. And um, the CK05 uh, plugin uh, will extend it. Well, the CK05 plugin uh, consists of uh, a couple of parts, let's say. Uh, the UI is simply the toolbar button. Um, the command uh, basically is a command that inserts those two columns. Um, it's detached because basically CK05 can be also a headless editor, so you don't actually even have to have UI to, to use it. You can use simple comments and execute them programmatic programmatically. Um, schema and converters are two mysterious keywords that I will cover later. Um, okay, so how does the plugin looks like? It consists of a couple of uh, files. I will just um, still have a couple of minutes, right? Uh, I don't understand this. Anyway, five minutes, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> so I have 10 minutes left, right? 10 minutes left. Oh, cool. So we have plenty of time. There will be some time for questions. Uh, okay, so um, so we have a couple of files. Um, and the main plugin file, nothing interesting. It just loads the remaining parts, like the editing part and the UI part. So nothing fancy. And uh, the UI is pretty simple, the UI part. So uh, basically, we just uh, define the button. And uh, when the button uh, is pressed, we will execute the comment. And we also bind the state of the button to the state of the comment so that the button could disable itself when uh, the comment cannot be executed. Um, mysterious, mysterious, let's say, uh, concepts in CK Editor 5. Uh, one of those mysterious things is the model. Uh, unlike CK Editor 4 that worked directly on the document object model, uh, CK 5 has its own model. So um, we no longer work on this HTML on the right side. CK Editor 5 internally works on an abstract presentation of the document. It makes it simpler uh, to implement really complex, uh, <laughs> let's say, uh, features such as real time collaboration. Um, yeah, so um, I will show you maybe some more uh, pragmatic example of how the model looks like. Uh, so basically, um, you can probably guess what's the HTML representation of this content on top. Uh, so you see that H1 elements are actually presented as headings, probably not in ground grading, breaking, but the more interesting thing starts here. So we'll no longer have elements, HTML elements, to um, actually understand where we have a link in the document or um, where the content is, I don't know, uh, have some style applied. Uh, we use just attributes on text. Again, it makes things simpler. Another thing uh, where we, that was simplified in the module uh, are, for example, list items uh, where we no longer have nested structures to present lists. Uh, we have attributes to uh, describe uh, how actually the uh, HTML list is uh, created. And why I'm showing this to you? Because if you will be working on your own plugin, you can use any model representation you like. You don't have to use the HTML uh, representation of the functionality that you are creating. So for example, uh, if you are, I don't know, trying to create a product card uh, that in HTML will be really complex because of the UI, in the model, it can be really simple. It can be product card with an ID attribute, and that's it. Um, I will cover this uh, later, why it's uh, cool to work this way. Um, okay, so uh, the editing part uh, of the file uh, takes care of the most uh, heavy lifting, so uh, I will go through each of these methods later uh, because there's one more mysterious work to, actually two mysterious works to explain, which is the schema and converters. Um, so nothing interesting here, maybe I will just switch from later. Uh, okay, so here is the comment. As I mentioned, uh, you don't have to actually have the UI CK5 to uh, interact with it. So here we define the comment. So if you execute the comment either by pressing the button or executing it through API, uh, we will simply create those. Ah, sorry, I have to move on back to slides to show you one thing. Uh, 
model and the view. Uh, this is how the columns will look like uh, in the editor, in the editing area, and how Drupal will receive those columns. However, internally, uh, CQ05 will use this presentation, so it's simpler than this. Uh, because we don't have those classes, this this form can change later into whatever you like. Uh, but if you keep uh, the module intact in CQ05, you will have less work later on with I don't know uh, working further on this plugin. So uh, as you see, sorry, we're gonna work on that module element. So let's move on. So now it's maybe easier to understand what the command does. It simply creates uh, two columns elements and column elements and um, yeah, and add it. And so we make some uh, usability enhancement to actually, when we insert that two columns, it would be nice to um, actually show the cursor uh, in the first column so that the user could immediately start typing in that column. So we also uh, create a paragraph and we insert it into this uh, column and set the selection there already. Uh, nothing fancy. Um, okay, so uh, the column, uh, the command itself will insert these two already mentioned model elements, two columns and column, into the editor on a current selection, if it is allowed in by schema. Uh, it's not that in Secretor Five you can insert everything everywhere. Uh, schema defines the restrictions when uh, and what you can insert to the editor. So, for example. Uh, where a node is allowed or disallowed. Uh, so, for example, paragraphs, paragraphs can be allowed in root, uh, but you cannot insert a paragraph into a heading. Uh, what uh, the schema allows, uh, defines what attributes are allowed for a certain node. Uh, so it will be pointless to have, I don't know, diff element with SRC attribute, but images should have uh, SRC attributes. And so it defines some additional semantics uh, of model nodes. and there's one more important uh, thing in Secutor 5. By default, Secutor 5 will only retain known elements and attributes. All the other stuff will be stripped off. Uh, this is why Drupal asked us to introduce general HTML support so that Secutor 5 didn't actually do this. But this is the default behavior of Secutor 5. Um, yeah, so speaking about schema, uh, we just registered that there is a uh, two columns um, element where block elements uh, will be allowed and we tell that the column is allowed only in the two columns elements and things like that. You can read more about schema in the documentation. And one more important uh, concept of um, Secutor 5 are the converters. So as I mentioned, internally Secutor 5 operates on a simplified model uh, but this is the internal part of CK Editor, and uh, if you get the data from CK Editor, for example, to save it in Drupal database, you have to convert this model to the data view, and at the same time, uh, if you want to uh, work on the content in the editor, we have to convert this model into the editing view. And why I'm showing here two separate pipelines? Uh, because it's important also, I mean, it's uh, also possible to have completely different data view and different editing view. So for example, in the editing view, we can offer some rich presentation uh, of some content. For example, we can show a nice preview of a tweet or a nice preview of a chart. Uh, while in the data view, you can use a really simple uh, virtual, let's say, name of this element so that you could, in the future, use a different presentation of the same element. So um, sometimes the data view and the editing view is different. For example, in case of uh, inbit media, like tweets, videos, etc. cetera. Um, now the upcast conversion. Uh, so I was, right now, I was before telling about getting data from CK Editor, but we also have like a different direction, right? So if you load data to CK Editor, we have to convert uh, the data uh, to the model. And also, if you paste content into CK Editor, we have to take this HTML or whatever and convert it to the model. So we have also a conversion into the other direction. And this is what our plugin does. Don't try to understand this code. <laughs> you can understand it later. Uh, so we basically uh, define here conversion 
um, of this element to the model and vice versa. Uh, and the same we do for the column element. And I'm sure you understood all the source code there. <laughs> uh, again, don't worry, uh, it's on, on GitHub. Okay, um, so uh, after we are finished with creating the plugin, uh, we can enable it in, in the Drupal modules screen. And basically we have our plugin working. Yeah, uh, by the way, there's one thing that I showed to you, but I didn't explain. Uh, there is a nice functionality that we created uh, for developers. Uh, it's called CK Editor 5 Inspector. Uh, you can find it in our documentation how to enable it. Uh, so if you work on your own plugin uh, with CK Editor, it gives you an insight on how model looks like, how the view looks like, what are the comments. Um, actually, this is shown on the screenshot, but you can inspect just like in developer console, you can inspect every single element here and see uh, how does the selection look like, uh, where are the markers, and, and so on. So it's a really useful thing if you work on Secretor 5 plugin. Uh, and that's it. So um, thanks, and if you have any questions, feel free to ask. Uh, ah, there was some competition actually. Uh, someone asked me to Figure out a question, and if you know the answer, you have a chance of winning a one-year subscription for a PHP Storm, uh, sponsored by JetBrains, if I remember correctly. So uh, <laughs> this is a question for people who know us for a long time. So I'm curious if any of you knows what was the former name of CK Editor, because we changed the name a long time ago. So does any of you know what was the previous name of CK Editor? Fuck. <laughs> Sorry, I already answered this. Uh, so I don't have any different uh, question <laughs> for you. <laughs> um, yeah, sorry. Uh, yeah, the former name was FCK Editor. Uh, and it sounded bad for native speakers. So we removed the F um, from the front of the name. Yes, so I'm good at asking questions, right, and making competitions. Um, <laughs> well, the next speaker will have an opportunity to figure out a different question. Okay, so um, maybe you have any questions? Yeah? Uh, thank you very much for uh, the talk. It was uh, quite interesting to know about the premium features. And actually, you started from uh, the answer in my initial question. Uh, how CK source is living, and you started uh, showing these features. So my question is, why do you feel sorry about getting the money and providing some extra features uh, to the users who need them? Because like it, it was feeling that you are kind of sorry about uh, sorry, but we need to make money for living. Yeah, um, good question. Um, I don't know because I have a feeling that uh, the. Mm, the open source community is actually sometimes don't understand the fact that we offer some premium functionality that for which you have to pay for. Um, maybe it's wrong because we didn't feel. I mean, we are talking on, on conferences and with you know with people, and we don't feel that uh, it's actually a common a situation where people don't understand this. But uh, you know, when when being on a conference. Uh, um for for developers for people i i feel like a little bit weird when talking about things for which you have to pay for uh it sounds a little bit like a commercial um but at the same time uh, that's not maybe my intent uh because i don't know you also work in commercial companies right so you want to satisfy your customers so that that's my intention to show that there are other possibilities, of course, that require money, but our time to develop functionalities also costs money, right? So if your customers will have, I don't know, requirement to have real-time collaboration, I'm showing th this opportunity that you don't have to develop it by yourself, but that we are delivering it already. So thanks. Okay, so um, thank you, everyone, one more time. Uh, it was nice to meet you, all of you. <laughs>